my first time driving a long hood. This has plenty of power. Yeah. I mean, this car feels like a race car. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm sorry it's been a long time. I had a new baby and I haven't had much time. I've been helping my wife. But I'm really excited today because it's gonna start a little bit of a series that we're gonna do with my really good friend, Derek, who we actually met through, through Porsches and through having our kids get into this. Today, we're gonna talk about his 1973 and a half 911T. We're gonna go around the car, we're gonna do a little drive and also uh, talk about the story of what this car has become. So follow along. Show me this beauty. How's it going? This is my 1973 and a half, 911 Long Hood. Got it about two years ago on Bring a Trailer. Oh, you got it on Bring a Trailer? I didn't yeah. know that. Got, got really lucky. Um, have the Bring a Trailer people kind of, you know, filter out a lot of the, the quirks about it and teach me a little bit about it. Picked it up, I think came out of Ohio. Great family. Father passed away, gave it to her daughter. Daughter wasn't really interested and ended up uh, listing on Bring a Trailer. Spent about a year and a half sorting out everything from suspension to the electrical, a couple modifications with the seats and stuff. Did a couple couple wrenching things, I think you saw. <laughs> I, did <laughs> yeah. the, uh, I did the alternator, did the spark plug, so I'm just kind of getting my, tipping my toes into the, the 911 water trying to figure out some stuff to do on my own you know i think you've already taken some photos it's my uh, daily 73 so not quite daily but i probably drive this thing probably three or four days out of the week and how long is your commute commute is about 20 minutes yeah 20 minutes so it's a good you know gets up up to speed up to engine heat i, I got the baby seats in the back but what um, do you think about people that are like babying these cars I mean, I'm never going to judge anybody for what they do with their car, right? right? But at the end of the day, Porsche, I think, you know, unlike any other manufacturer, these things are made to take abuse. And so, like, why not? They always joke about, like, why are you saving your car Save for the next, for the next, the next person, person right? right? There's no reason. Yeah. And, you know, with the car this old, you're going to have to sort everything out again, right? You're going to have to do new suspension. You're going to have to, you know, rebuild the engine, reseal everything. So once it's sorted, you might as well drive it. And I think what I've noticed, especially with a lot of the air-cooled, is they like to be driven. And if you let it sit for more than three weeks, four weeks, then problems start come happening. up. Yeah, weird stuff starts happening. Lights start turning on and off. <laughs> you know, stuff just starts Definitely breaking electrical down. electrical after a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So why not? Like, drive it. You know, the coolest photos are the ones where people are, like, up in the mountains on camping with these things. So, but, you know, doesn't, too, doesn't, doesn't do it harm, you know, taking it out every day. Yeah. Tell me what the T means. Because so I know there's a lot of people that may not know what exactly that means. 911 came in three iterations during the long hood. I think the earlier ones just had one. I think the, the short wheelbases had one. Then they went up later on to uh, what's went to long wheelbase. I think. They had a, they always had a bottom, which is the T. And then they had the middle, which is uh, earlier was on the, it was the L and then it became the E. And then the, the top of the line, you know, the high strung one, which is the S, which is the one that everybody wants. But actually I think car and driver, when they were first doing it, they said the T is really good for the road. It's got a little bit more torque on the low end. And then, so it drives in the city wasn't better. Wasn't the T lighter because it had certain things deleted? I don't know. I think, you know, the modern T's, like the one that yeah. they redid in like 2018, 19, when they recreated, they definitely did like lighter windows, right. um, you know, lower suspension. I think on these ones, it was pretty much the same. I think the engine is different. Sure so they... is this motor matching? No, this one's not. Okay, so, and which motor is this? So this is the this is a kind of a Frankenstein engine here, but you have the air box here. So this this is the CIS engine, which is a 73 and a half. It's only half a year, so it's really hard to find those parts. So I think what happened is the previous owner added so these air runners here are from a later maybe a 75, 76, 77 cuz the original runners from this engine should be black. Okay. And I think the these are supposed to be uh, ported in at a different location. I'll so, talk with my mechanic. So it's the right engine, but just not matching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's been Frankenstein together over the years. I think when these weren't that valuable, people would find the parts they can get. And sometimes, you know, for for a 73 and a half, it was only half a year where they had the right parts, so they could find something else and bolt it on. So part of the charm of these cars, you can mix and match a lot of pieces from later models. It'll run. It might not run exactly the way it was meant for manufacture, but you can tinker around with it a little bit. Let's talk about these stickers. Did you update these? <laughs> are these Carbone? So, yeah, these are Carbone, man. So Carbone go. doing a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Shout out to Carbone out in Poland. They're, they started, I think, with these stickers. Yeah, like, you know, correct that's spec the story. Stickers. Now they're making interiors. They're doing... Uh, I got a pretty cool cup holder from Carbone. It's like, it's like, build it out. Oh yeah. It's actually just a panel. 
and they, they they made that cup holder carbon does that so you can just you know bolt that on the top super cool well let, let's talk about the interior while we got it open yeah so these i got from a guy up in la these are just a ricardo like these probably not 80s seats mm -hmm. um i have the matching pair to that other corbeau seat inside okay. but it doesn't uh, fold so I had to get this one sort of folds so I can put the kids in the back right right yeah, right, right. So that one the fixed back and then so I got the other corbo to match but not for right now what else have you done to the oh, interior so, yeah. is this the wheel that came on it yeah this is the wheel I think uh, they, they had an S option where they leather wrapped it but at that time a lot of times when they got weathered out people would just do a wrap I love the patina I love actually it. it's I mean, awesome I've thought about changing it to the wood wheel which is an earlier short wheel oh, style mm -hmm. but I like this little patina look on it this is this is carbon. This little donut is carbon donut stickers, which is cool. Just gives a little Homer Simpson feel. And so this has got a 915 in it. Yeah, it's got a 915. Mm -hmm. Change the shift knob. Uh, I got the radio is a Continental, which I have on all my Porsches because it doesn't have uh, the lighting is kind of still yellow. Yeah. But it does Bluetooth. The interior looks really clean. Did you redo those carpets? Yeah, the carpets I got off of Craigslist, but then I had um, K and H over in Garden Grove do the install they did all this stuff they did all the carpeting yeah they installed yeah, it at great. carpet and then they did they did a new headliner so the headliner was all shredded before oh yeah so we did a whole new headliner so it's factory spec headliner now, did these ever come with sunroofs do you know yeah they definitely came they with sunroofs oh, so yeah but i like the slick top yeah yeah it's just less stuff for to mess around with yeah less stuff to break well, i got a new dash i think the dash was from carbone as well i don't think it's factory spec but it's just you know the other one is all cracked and i had a cover on it looks pretty bad door panels are pretty much original but actually when i was replacing the door checks which sometimes they fail in here these door checks when i replaced them i found out this door is a, a maybe a short wheel based door i still have the other two doors Oh, I have okay. two doors that I want to do with the windows, with the folding windows. Okay. But this door, the door check is actually a short wheelbase door check. And the other one is long wheelbase. The only way I was knowing because the, the, the screws that go into it don't fit. So I brought the wrong ones that was proper for the car. So these didn't come with uh, a, a place to... No, oh, it did. It did. It's just store. gone. It's just gone. Oh, okay. There's like the box used to be here. Got the pockets, it. But the pockets are super expensive. Like they're super expensive to like to get redone. I don't use them anyways. Yeah, um, and it's kind of clean like that. Too. It's super clean. And actually, Carbone, they make everything. But Carbone just made a sick door with like with a with a pocket map pocket. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. That's I think it's like two it, yeah. or three K though. But yeah, it's it's done right. It's done really nice. These are Steelies. Steelies. These, these come with the car. No, so I I had uh I came with mismatching uh wheels. I had the back were real Fuchs and the front were fake knockoffs. Okay. So I got rid of those. I found these online put these on it kind of gives it kind of that old you know race look yeah um, really basic and you know I think everybody has Fuchs on them I think that's the right way to go but I wanted something a little different yeah I also love is this a new grill no the grills so 72 and 73 I believe were all blacked out grills oh, so I before it was chrome it looks more modern I feel like cause a lot of stuff now is blacked out right but everything pre I think 72 was all chrome so I think these were a little bit I think they might have been cheaper but I, I like to look better with the black yeah. Because when you, when you take the, the black grill yeah. with the steelies. Yeah. It's a little more of an outlaw look. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then let's talk about suspension because this, the, it's just sitting so perfect. So the suspension, we got uh, Johnson's Alignment up in Torrance. They do a lot of my alignment work. They did, uh, they updated all the suspension, refreshed it all, corner balanced it. Uh, S model brakes on it. I forget. Oh, okay. I mean, he did a bunch of stuff. I just kind of told him I need this to kind of ride well. You're not getting that much power out of it, so I think the, the fun is in the suspension, and right? What is the horsepower on this car? Ah, dude, you know? I think it's like 130, 125, 135, rated from the factory, so it's probably lost a little bit by now. And actually, if you notice the trim, so this is like S-bump trim, it's thicker, right? S-S trim is thicker. Mm -hmm. And then this one I just bought off a line. You can see how it's rough here. This yeah. is supposed to be, it's supposed to be covered with like aluminum, which right. is like the S trim, but this is like a non-S trim, which is skinnier. You can see how the rubber's mm -hmm. skinny. Um, so I actually I put the wrong side trim on, but I think I like the way it looks better than the cover yeah, cool. covered with the other trim. This is an S bumper, has a little the lip and stuff, but this is composite. So I have a, a regular non S bumper that I need to get painted, add the trim to. I'm gonna go to the 356 show this next weekend and try to get get some more stuff. But this is the S bumper, which is the S trim. But I'm yeah, gonna try. Good. To, fog lights got from Craig li Craigslist. Mm -hmm. These I got at the 356 show last year. They're amber lights, which are kind of throwback to the Monte Carlo one, right. the Monte Carlo French, rally. Right? Yeah, the French one. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be period correct. But and you haven't gotten pulled over. With I have yet. not. I have not. <laughs> I mean, hold my breath every time, but so far yeah. so good.
How about the paint on this car? Has it had a respray? Have you done it? I had a really bad crack here that I created when it was cold. I pressed here. That's right, I remember. And that. it was a huge happy face crack. But so now I press on this side to lock it. So we repainted the hood. The rest of it, I don't know. I'm sure it's repainted in a while. So I noticed on these, we only have one mirror. Right? Yeah. Now, I think all long hoods only had one mirror. So there, I, I believe you can factory option them with another mirror. Oh, Mine okay. had one on this side, but if you come over here, you can see like the previous owner installed the two holes. It was, it was, it was torqued too hard. So it was a dent here. I popped it out. Got it. I like it better without the mirror. And like, you know, it's kind of that period, you know, back then not all cars had mirrors on both so sides. So was it 74 where we started to have mirrors on both sides? I know 74 went to impact bumper. Yeah. So I assume at that point it went to both sides. I don't know. I'm sure someone else knows better than I do, but I like it cleaner with that one side off. Does your hood strut work? Oh yeah, like, hood struts, I replaced them because they was failing. You had like kind of that stick that everybody has on these right, cars to hold it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got those from Pelican, but okay. I guess there's like some upgraded ones where you can get like some type of carbon fiber. It's supposed to last longer, but yeah, they're like a hundred bucks. There's one that's not hydraulic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are hydraulic. Yeah. You pull up before you push down. Push down, yeah, yeah. And everyone has told me, don't get those. Yeah, yeah. If someone's working on your car and they don't yeah. know that, they'll try to force, force it, it down and, and break it. Thing. Oh, I, I did a carpet kit on the inside of it. Oh, let's take a look. Yeah, I got those, those carbon. Carbon, carbon makes everything you want. <laughs> nice. So that carpet kit, I mean, it's better than the old felt stuff that was right. in there. So actually, another interesting thing is these, these grills, right? They're chrome pre, I think, 72 or 73. Mm -hmm. And then they have like a cutout. So if you go online, people are saying, oh, if you have the fogs, you got to have a certain one with a cutout. These ones, I think they're cheaper to buy. buy. Mm -hmm. So I had the guys at Asse, they just ch chopped it off, created a space for the, for the mount, for the, for the uh, lights. Nice, because the 911R had the open vents, right? Yeah, they had open vents yeah. over here with like little, kind of like a grill thing. Yeah, I'm jealous that your hood stays up. Is that crazy, right? <laughs> it's nice, you don't bang your head. Yeah. I don't want to open and close it too many times. I don't know when it's gonna, you know, when it's gonna fail on so you. So what's this strut? Did you do this? That was good guys over at uh, Johnson's. So they installed that. I think it's adjustable too. Nice. I wish I could, I wish I knew more I'd tell you, but I mean, it drives better. Yeah, so hey. that's all that matters. It looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me how you start this thing. All right, so this is like those old lawn mowers, right? Or like <laughs> the old motorcycles. Um, it's got a fuel pump, but it's got a manual hand, hand choke. So before I got the spark plug, you know, I think the old carbureted ones, you prime the, the fuel with a pedal, but you pull the throttle all the way up. Hopefully this bad boy starts. <laughs> I let the fuel pump run a little bit, start it up. And then, so because it's midday, it revs high. In the morning, it chokes a little bit. So you got to kind of play with a hand throttle okay. up and down just to get the right idle. And then you drive for about five, 10 minutes with the hand throttle, maybe at a quarter, half. Once it warms up, you can drop the hand throttle down. Okay. And then you're good to go. So if it's colder, you would have it up higher. I, I pull it all the way up. Starts it. it. I'm going to get a little bit of backfire because I, I think, you know, the engine's not completely tuned. But since I replaced the spark plugs, um, I think it's it started better. You know, that was a pretty big deal. I think it's ready. You ready to drive this thing? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's talk about how you fell in love with Porsche. Oh, you want to tell the story? Yeah. So, the okay, story. so 2016, 17, I'm getting my uh, blinds done, and this guy comes up, sees I have some nice cars then. I had like an Audi RS and stuff. He's like, oh, that's a nice car. It's gonna be, you know, really expensive outside of warranty, you know? So we just talking back and forth, and he tells me he used to be a Porsche master mechanic before he opened up the blinds company. He owns the blind company. So I'm just talking to him, and I'm just like, you know, shooting it with him, and like, hey, if I were to get an old Porsche 911, which I knew nothing about at the time, like, mm -hmm. which one should I get, okay. right? And he literally goes, 87 911 G50. So he just throws like a bunch of numbers right. and letters at me, and I don't, I'm the uninitiated, right? So I don't know even, I don't even know what that means. Turns out it's a G50 transmission, 1987 yeah. model, 911, whatever. Yeah. So I go and I Google it online, and I absolutely fall down the rabbit hole. Deep, like dive. just deep, just like from just going online. You know, the community is so awesome. There's right. so much information. And that was probably about four or five years into um, Patrick Long over at Porsche doing Luftgekult. Right, so I started kind of looking. The show's coming to town. I'm like, you know, let me check this out. So I got my first Porsche 911 Auto Trader at the time. I think it was like 35k, 38k out of Pennsylvania. Okay. Rule well, number two. Unseen. Uh, unseen. Unseen. I just had a talk with a guy. He's kind of crazy. Oh, he calls me later. Tells me the IRS is coming after him. And he, do I want to buy his other Porsche? But anyways. Oh my 
my god. Rule number one, I guess that all people know that I didn't know is you don't buy cars from Pennsylvania because of the salt in right. the road. Oh, specifically yeah, Pennsylvania. Anywhere where there's snow. Yeah. So anyway, I come back. There's a bunch of rust on it. Spent all this time sorting out the '87, but learned so much about the community. Met so many cool people. You know, uh, the right. You know, the mechanics, the guys. You, got, you know, it's, an, it's all trial and error too, right? Yeah. Like meeting the right people. Um, and then after that, I, uh, you know, the 993, which hopefully we'll do another video of. I yeah. got the 993 was my next thing that I was looking for. And my wife has this trick, you know, four car garage type of thing. So I had to get rid of the 87, got to the long hood. But it kind of just started the obsession with learning about these cars, learning about the heritage and everything. So what is like, you know, you and I grew up, we were in high school in the 90s. Yep. JDM scene. Oh, for sure. Right? Prelude. My 97 Prelude, shout out to my 97 Prelude, the Hulk. <laughs> what was your first, like, car that you remember for Porsche? So, like, for me, I remember my brother had car magazines. Yeah. And I remember him showing me the Roof Yellowbird. Okay. That was the first thing wow, I remember. you remember Roof Yellowbird? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so my first Porsche that I remember yeah. is a Transformer per Porsche. Okay. Jazz, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that was Porsche, maybe, like, 935 or something. Yeah. So that's the first yeah, that's one that right. I really, I really remember yeah. as a Porsche. But I don't even know it's Porsche. I just knew it was Jazz. Okay. Right? <laughs> and the first, like, Porsche that I kind of remember, I remember seeing, like, 964s and 99, you know, 993s maybe. But right. like, the first one that I remember as a Porsche was, you know, sitting in, you know, hanging out in high school. Kid gets dropped off. And it gets dropped with a brand new Boxster. And it was like right when the Boxster came out, right? Yeah. And so like, I don't know too much about cars. I know enough. I don't know too much about Porsches at all. Yeah. But Boxster came out, center center exhaust, which was super cool then, yeah, right. right? Brand new Boxster, convertible obviously, right? So I'm just like, we're standing like, what is that car? Why does it look like that? You know, and people can say what they say about the Boxster, but it really saved Porsche at the time, right? Totally. It, it was like kind of their mass produced vehicle, accessible, drop top. You know, drove well, mid-engine. Yeah. Uh, it really, you know, that and the Cayenne saved the whole company. But at that point, you know, not knowing anything about the 911s, that's the first one that I really recall seeing. Um, and I, you know, to this day, I still think boxes are pretty cool. People say, you know, they, you know, they're actually. I think for bang for the buck, they're actually really good cars. Every person I know that has a Boxster yeah. absolutely loves it, right? And says like, you know, I have this 911. Yeah, I yeah. Have this, this, and like this. And I love driving my Boxster yeah, on the daily. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't have that that clout that the 911 has, right. it, like in the in the in the whole scheme of it. But I think from a driving experience, mid-engine, open top, you know, it kind of has that old air-cooled feel in terms of um, that that proper power-to-weight ratio. Yeah, it's kind of light. Um, you can kind of get it ready, Boxster right there. Oh, We're yeah. talking about it, right? <laughs> I think the cool thing also about these Porsches is like, you know, like you said, we came from the JDM kind of yep. modification world. Right. And I think that next logical step is like getting into these old Porsches because I think the culture's changed a little bit where modifying these is not as blasphemous as it was before. Yeah. Before it was all like OEM, original, you know, restoration. And now, you know, kids our age growing up, having a little money, you know, we want to build the same thing, but we want to make it kind of ours. Right. So we take a little bit of that JDM stance, look, exhaust, yeah. whatever. I never thought I'd be able to afford a Porsche. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So for me, it started out with, you know, my parents got me, or got my brother an Accord. Yeah. He passed it down to me. I with that really, custom interior. With that custom <laughs> interior. I fell in love with just the car scene. You know, that time it was like, go and do like drag races in like industrial areas and yeah. let's go meet up at you know ranch cucamonga and you know just have those hills yeah and, those races you know cool. meet up with fine girls and whatever then i got into like bmw yeah see yeah. so same thing though i dropped it i yep. put big wheels on it that stuff and then once you got into the porsche thing i've been surprised at how the the culture is yeah yeah I think, you know what, I think the difference with the Porsche culture, and I think BMW shares some of it more so than other brands, is that people are really interested in the engineering. They're right. really interested in the design. Yeah. And I think it's more than just a car. It's more It's, mm -hmm. it's more like understanding the motorsport, understanding yeah. the engineering, understanding like kind of the history. Um, and I think they it's build It's kind of like watches, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, absolutely, you know? 100%. Because they live a lot in their history. They, they cherish like kind of their racing motorsport history, and then they build from that. Right. Um, and they actually give, you know, fans access to a lot of their motorsport history. The whole thing with this car is like, 
I think I'm the only person that knows how to drive it because it's gonna <laughs> I feel like has a bunch of little pieces you gotta get used to. I feel like that's how a lot of these are. Old cars, right? yeah. It's, All right. And that's some of the fun behind it. Yeah. Is that it's it's special. So, so first thing I notice. The smell is different. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of fuel smell. Yeah, and you know one. what it reminds me of? You'd know this being an Orange County kid. Yeah. It reminds me of Autopia, Disney. Oh, it's 100% Autopia, dude. <laughs> this is, and it sounds like Autopia. Yeah. Got that old, that, that lawnmower engine sound. I also noticed that the, the steering wheel seems bigger. It's definitely bigger. I looked it up, I think it's 400 millimeters. Okay. Which I think is the largest steering wheel I think they had, even now when you look at it, a lot of the new racer ones, 360, yeah. 380. Um, it's bigger. I think probably compensates for the you know no power steering and everything. So right. the bigger the radius, the easier it is to turn. Right. And I know I actually really like the driving position. Yeah. I didn't expect it to be too different, but yeah. it is this just right there. Yep. Let's see how I do. This is my first time driving a long hood, so we're it's cool. cool. So first impressions is that it feels light actually. Yeah. Definitely lighter. Uh, I'm not sure the exact weight, um, but you know, in the old Porsche world, it's like, you know, lightening up the car is adding horsepower. So, yeah. oh, the brakes. Okay, brakes are a lot lighter. You need more pressure? More pressure to yes. activate the brakes? Yes. Yeah. You need much more pressure to activate the brakes. So, than these my brakes car. are not hydraulic assisted. So, you're definitely, that's why I actually had to upgrade to racing brake pads because it's not hydraulic assisted. Uh, so we have Ferrodo brake pads on this. The first brake pads I had were super squeaky racing pads. They grip better, but they're really loud. Um, and then uh, the guys over at Asse recommend I try Ferrodo, which I think are Italian brake pads. So those ones uh, really helped out in terms of the quietness. Has this 915 been um, Supposedly before I purchased the car. Uh, so I, it feels good. Yeah, so the, the guys over at Asse redid the bushings. So the bushings, it used to like kind of misshift a lot, but now it's better. Yeah, which I've um, heard that's always the first thing you want to do. Yeah, yeah, that was big. I'm gonna drop the throttle, so it should be warm by now. So yeah. the hand throttle's dropped down to its off position. Okay. And it's actually just a mechanical wire that pulls kind of like the, the uh, throttle just forward. It just, yeah, it just opens the throttle, pulls it. Um, so another quirky thing about this car is, I mean, it's kind of fixed since I did the, um, the spark plugs. But a lot of times I'll drive and then it'll just get, I don't get stuck around 2000. It's not doing it right now. Interesting, yeah. It'll just get stuck it. at 2000. So when I get up to the, the a stoplight, it'll be like revving a little high. And then people think I'm trying to race them. Right. And I'm just like, yo, no, my car is kind of just broken. It's not really working. <laughs> it's only 130 horsepower. <laughs> just relax. So what I do is if, if it does hold at 2000 RPMs, I just kind of let off of the throttle a little, I mean, off of the clutch a little bit. So it's like kind of like stalling it, and then it'll just pull the throttle down, and then it idles beautifully. So now, do you do? So I have a 915 as well. Yeah. I always go back to second before going back to first because there's no synchros in first. Yeah, do you yeah. Do the same. So actually, I stay in third because of that that, that throttle thing. Uh -huh. I actually stay in third until until it drops below 2,000 RPM. So something sticks there. Okay. And then I'll just drop to neutral. Okay. Until I'm in a dead stop. I'm, exactly. I'm rarely ever in first unless I'm off of a stop, a complete dead stop. Right. I'm pretty much in second, if anything, you know, so yeah. I'm not in first often. You know, the transmission feels great on this. Yeah. I enjoy the larger wheel. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. Kind of, you know, luckily, you know, we don't have fat thighs. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's your thighs. It's like my 3.2 when I got it, I was kind of like, oh, the wheel looks lame. Yeah. And like, I wanted to do a Momo Prototipo. And then yeah. you had told me, like, drive it, experience it, yeah. have it before you make any changes. Yeah. So that if you do make changes, you really notice them. Yep. A hundred percent. And I love my wheel now. Yeah. You gotta I love the, like how it kind of feels squirrely. Yep. You yep. know, like that's part of the fun, I think. And I think you gotta allow yourself to kind of adjust to the driving. And then if you really don't like it, change it. You know, and I think I told yeah. you before, like, Every single time you change a small thing, whether it's like the steering wheel or the light bulb, it kind of gives us a new license for yeah. like another couple months. You're like, oh, I got, right, right, right. I got new headlights. Yeah. Or, oh, I got a new steering wheel. It's a new car again. And that's part of, I think, the process of really enjoying these vehicles is like making these micro adjustments, yeah. really experiencing it and then making another micro adjustments. And like, you know, I, th I think you keep 
all the stuff that you change in case you want to go back. You have right, the option, you right. know, you keep it for like a year. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not going to use it. Okay, sell it. There's no reason to get rid of it right when you get the new the new upgrade. Tell me about the Continental Radio because I know a lot of people look to do this one. A lot of people go to the Blaupunk one by Bremen. Oh, yeah. Um, have you had any I, problems with I it? I haven't had any problems. The Blaupunk one is cool. Um, the Continental is really good for, I think, 964s and 993s because the color of the light and the kind of the intensity of the light is kind of perfect and period correct. Um, it works well on this because you don't want something that's like too technologically advanced. Yeah. I think it looks out of place. That's the why Blaupunk, I don't yeah. like the... The Porsche, the Porsche management class, yeah, the Porsche Classic, yeah. and I think Porsche. I mean, this thing is, I think maybe five or six hundred dollars. Yeah, that thing's fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and then you can just plug and play. You got your Bluetooth, you got your tunes. Yeah. So did you put a mic in here as well? I no? did. You I did. did put Where the mic do you in. have your mic? Because I was just reading a thread yesterday saying yeah. their mic was up here and people can't hear them, and then other people said put it on the steering so, wheel stock. Some people put it here. Mine's underneath the dash right here. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. And I think it's okay. I know where it is so I can hunch over if I really need to get it clear. Do people um, tell you, like... I mean, I have, the problem is this. Well, on these old air-cooled air one, you know, the ACs don't work, right? Yeah. We live in SoCal. Right. So, windows are always down. Yeah. So, if you're, you're going anywhere faster than 15 miles per hour, they're not going to hear you. Right. So, if you get close, yeah, they can hear you. It's more for, like, an emergency. I don't really utilize it that much. Yeah. It's nice to have. I'm sure if it's by the window, you're going to you're gonna hear a lot of noise. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who knows? The sound? Yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, this Mine is like is a, the this same old... sometimes, though. You know why? Because it's 50 years old, dude. The car is 50 years old. It's going to make noises that you don't understand. It's just an old car, dude. Like... So I notice on the clutch, when I'm letting the clutch out, yeah. there's a little stick. Like yeah, kind of yeah. sticks a little bit. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't know what a pristine long hood is supposed to feel, <laughs> feel like. like yeah. So I'm like, maybe that's normal. Maybe it's right. not. No, I know. That's, that's and until I figure out or until I drive someone else's where it's all sorted, I just kind of live with it. Yeah. But I definitely think that's part of the charm, right? Like, you kind of, as it gets better, you know, if you once you're kind of working on it, you're appreciating as it, you kind of sort it out. That's part of the fun of it. I also noticed on this, and maybe this may be just because the difference in the seat or the fact that it's not a Targa. Yeah. I feel lower in the car. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Car. I don't know because, you know, the seating mounting points are different through the years. So actually, maybe the seat is actually seated lower. Okay. Because obviously, this is an aftermarket seat. Right. And it's on an aftermarket bracket. And okay. so the bracket may actually seat lower on the actual chassis. Yeah, but I like it. It's like I feel like connected yeah. to the ground. Yeah. It's definitely a little more racy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think as the cars get newer and newer, you get higher and higher in the car. There's more padding. There's all this other stuff inside the vehicle. Right. This feels... It doesn't feel as old as I thought it was going to feel. Yeah. I thought I was gonna. this was going to feel like clunky and like no power and stuff, yeah. but... I think uh, I you know you had a more. you had a baby step with a with a Targa, right? Right. So I think if you went from your 997 to this, it would definitely feel really old. Yeah. But I think transitioning right. with a 3.2, getting kind of like that no power steering and stuff, you get yeah. used to it. Uh, the transition is is a little bit smoother. The tires on these or the wheels are what sixes? Fif- fif- Fifteen by sixes on sixes both? on. I mean they're all they're, they're square setups, so they're all around. They're the same. Yeah. Um, I- feeling maybe six but they're skinny yeah and they're squirrely right you know but I think that's part of the fun I right? agree you're being able to get the car to slip a little bit um, being able to kind of lose the back end just enough where you yeah. can keep under control and at lower speeds right you don't have to really push it to get the back to kind of to slip yeah I remember you telling me that's part of the fun is the squirreliness yeah and also too you're balancing with no power steering yep you're balancing um, add more tire then it's harder to turn yeah right yeah for sure so i think you know when you have more it's not plenty of power yeah i mean and you know porsche has always been a momentum car right so you want to get up to speed keep it up at speed yeah you know i'm not beating i'm not beating a civic off the line to be honest right. you know but uh i'm totally okay with that but it, it, this makes me excited and like who would have ever thought that 130 horsepower can make you yeah. excited yeah I mean, I got a sticker on the car that says slow car fast, right? I mean, <laughs> you want to drive a slow car fast, it's way more fun than yeah. driving a putting around in, you know, a 500, 800 horsepower car. Right. You know, you got to take that to the track to really have a good time with it. Yeah, I think probably the biggest difference is the brakes. Yeah. That I feel. Yeah. Is. You got to kind of be ahead of it. Right. Which you, I wasn't. The very yeah. first time we stopped, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm stopping. <laughs> 
no, my brakes work. That's yeah, just yeah, how yeah. it's supposed to feel. Yeah, yeah I, I can kind of be a little more cavalier with my car. Yeah. So actually, when I when the guys over at Ase were working on the brakes, I said, can I just put a regular brakes on? They're like, yeah, your foot will be through the through the firewall if you don't get racing brakes. Oh. Because there's no hydraulic assistance, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then so you need brakes that really, really bite in order to in order to upgrade. And these are upgraded brakes already. These are, I think, uh, the S brakes package on this. When you got the car, did it have this motor? Yeah, it had this motor. And uh, do you do you have any idea what the mileage is? No clue. So we got on the on the odometer, it's sixty six thousand. I it's got to be at least one hundred sixty six thousand, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's two hundred sixty six thousand. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a fifty year old car. Um, I mean, this car feels like a race car. Yeah. Yeah. I really love the shift knob too. Yeah. The feel of it is really nice, actually. Yeah. I like the thickness of it. Feels good in my hand. Yeah. And you know, I think same thing with the three point two in your car. I think these cars, as they warm up and the tires get a little bit warm mm -hmm. and the engine gets warm, it drives, you know, better and better. You know, a lot of modern cars you hop on, you can kind of push it right away, but right. you can give it some time to warm up. Yeah, yeah, this has been a great first experience for, uh, you for ready? a long hood. Are you ready for your long hood now? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've been ready for a long hood. I don't, need, I don't need a reason, a reason to, yeah. to buy one. I need more garage space is exactly. what I need. I need to put Get a, a lift. lift in. Get a yeah. lift. The problem is I'm, I'm at like nine six or something, oh. which I think is possible to do two but, 911s. I mean, but 911s are low profile. Yeah. So you're, 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 you 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 have a, you know, you probably squeeze it. You just yeah. might have to program it. Talking about Porsches, just put both kids to sleep here. If you want to get your kids to sleep, put them in a long hood. It'll work. So I hope you guys liked this review on my first time driving a long hood. I think it was a super cool car and please like and subscribe. I'm just an enthusiast like you guys. I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything, so I just do this because I love these cars. Thanks.